Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> I am here with a wonderful woman. Her name's Megan. I call her Meg. And um, she's not a body worker yet. Um, <laughs> she is an energy worker <laughs> in the sense that she understands energy and she works with energy and, and plays with it. Um, and in the same way that we all have the potential to be energy healers and energy workers. Um, I met her through Eric, Eric Nelson, shout out to Eric Nelson. <laughs> um, and I have loved working with her because I feel very much like as, as her healing progresses, also every, you know, every session I have my own, like oh my God, this is also me. And <laughs> it's so beautiful to, to be with you as you're healing, but also know that whatever you're working through is also a part of my journey. And that's really fun. I yeah. love that. Yeah. So thank you for all those kind words too. You're welcome. Yeah. So I wonder if you could give people kind of your it's like kind of your life history so far as like what you've done for work, because I, sure. I think you've had a really interesting journey and like whatever, you know, um, you want to say about each phase would be really interesting. I think for people to hear. Okay, sure. Um, so I, gosh, I feel like when I, when I go back and I want to give a history, I feel like I need to start like in Colorado when I first went to the air force Academy do it. Yeah. And I thought I wanted to be in the military and I wanted to be a pilot and an engineer. And within a couple of months of being there, it was too much for me. Like it was very difficult mentally, emotionally. Um, I mean, physically, yes, but I was at that point, I was in pretty good shape. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, wanted to leave and I, I felt I needed to leave like for my own mental health and well-being. So I uh, transferred to Auburn University and that was my parents' suggestion because they told me that if I left, I should still try to follow the path of being an engineer and a pilot mm -hmm. and Auburn is what, where that took me and that's what happened. I got my engineering degree and then I, and I got my pilot's license. This is just kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so um, after I graduated, um, I was really close friends with my husband. And um, also, you know, I was in Alabama and I felt like I had more of a home base in New Jersey. So I came back and started my career as an engineer. Mm. Uh, I mean, the first job I had at Lockheed Martin, I was in charge of building a satellite, like the entire satellite. I was like, do you, did you check my resume? Like <laughs> 23. Wow. <laughs> I've never done anything. You want me to build this gigantic piece of important equipment <laughs> <laughs> to go into space and do major things? Like, <laughs> Wait, so you were designing um, it or you were like physically putting that shit together? physically putting it together, overseeing it being put together. Yes. There was like a blueprint. Wow. For it. Yeah. And also we would have to make adjustments. Like if something didn't fit somewhere, you know, that was, it was the engineer's job to say, okay, well we have to move this communications box over here. Or I was like, wow, this is, I felt it in way over my head. So yeah. I wound up also, I was a contractor there and there was a lot of things changing in, in, you know, contracting defense. Uh, it was Lockheed Martin. So there was a lot happening. And so I wound up then moving over to Ford Motor Company, mm -hmm. um, where I was a supervisor, but also on like an engineering path. Mm -hmm. um, that How was old were you at this point? 24. 24. <laughs> She's a supervisor. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All these, these people were on the line longer than I had been alive. Like, wow. I think my lowest seniority person had like 26 years at, in the company. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And so I'm, I'm going through that and I'm sort of seeing, oh, I don't, I don't know if engineering is like the right thing for me. <laughs> this yeah. just doesn't feel right. And I just wanted to find a cool job after that. Mm -hmm. And so L'Oreal, the cosmetics company was hiring mm -hmm. and they were 
they hired me into a management training program mm -hmm. uh, and I started in quality mm -hmm. and then I took a short little path through engineering like equipment mm -hmm. very short because they needed someone in logistics and planning yeah. and so I went into logistics and planning new product launches and it was I just had a knack for it yeah so huh. yes yeah, so I like things neat and orderly and you know I like yeah, things kind of um unfold I like things being on time you know it's very yeah. much my personality so I, I fit with that, but it was hard. It, there was, there was a lot, there was a lot of work and, and then they promoted me into a manager position and I was meeting with all these people in New York. And again, I felt like, just like, Whoa, who's entrusting me <laughs> with these millions of dollars and launches, you know? Yeah. And, um, so at that point I actually left L'Oreal for Estee Lauder. I don't know if I thought that would be easier. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was just as crazy over there. Yeah. And I was working a lot. I married Jeff in mm -hmm. the meantime, mm -hmm. during this time. Um, and he and I were talking about starting a family. And I started to think, you know, I don't even think this job is really aligned with what I want to do and how, how I would want to be with my family. Mm -hmm. And so I want to say that I sat down with Jeff and we had this long conversation and we said, who has the earning potential or who would like to have more of a career? Yeah. Like, would, would that be you or me? You know, like we never really had that conversation. It just was kind of, I guess, assumed that I would do that as the mom. Yeah. You know, that I would kind of switch careers so that I could be a little more present mm -hmm. and Jeff's earning potential was more. So that's how we kind of rolled into Which the is next amazing phase. to think about because you were a freaking engineer <laughs> and like probably making loads of money doing what you were doing. So <laughs> go Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. I mean, and I, I said to him too, I said, you know, I, when I think back, I was like, I could have gone to New York. I could have been like a VP, a president. Like there are a lot of women in cosmetics and, yeah. and roles there, uh, marketing, marketing services. And I always worked with them and they had always said, you should come to New York. You can work in New York, yeah. you know, so we could have taken that turn. Totally. Yeah. And we he could have been stay at home mom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll say today. <laughs> First of all, he would have been great. Yeah, he would be. Watching him during this whole quarantine, like, he's having a great time. Like he's keeping everyone moving. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so I get. I I said, you know what? I've always wanted to be a teacher. So I started down that path. Um, I did an alternate route program. It was a year of a master's degree um, toward you know, masters in teaching. And as I was kind of writing my, um, like what I, what my philosophy of teaching and learning and everything was, it was like, I, I want to make a different, I want to help kids. Um, I think I wrote work toward positive change in their lives, you know, and I realized like, I'm not, this is not a math teacher right here. <laughs> what is this? You know, like, yeah. and then I realized, you know, it's a, it's a counselor. Yeah. Um, and Seton Hall happened to have a really nice hybrid, um, online in-person program. Mm -hmm. And so I went through that to get my master's in school counseling. The whole time Why? during which you have twins. I have twins and I'm working as the director of planning <laughs> at Estee Lauder. Yes. Oh my, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I know. There's been a lot of guilt around that for me at times. <laughs> I'm just amazed that you managed, honestly, like whatever I, guilt, but I'm just amazed that you somehow managed all of that energetically. Yeah. Like had the energy for that. Holy yeah. Holy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think about all the papers and that whole perfectionist thing that I had kind of mentioned, that orderly perfectionist, like it would take me hours to write papers, you know, because I really wanted to do my best. And yeah. I thought, this is really it. Like, this is what I, what I need. And it turns out it is what I needed. 
Yeah. For myself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and I started out in Camden, which has a reputation here in the Northeast as being the um, murder capital, I guess we would say. Yeah. Um, very, very, a lot of crime, um, you know, uh, low socioeconomic background. The students were from, you know, poor families. And I worked in a public charter school. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what, right now, if you asked me to go back to any of the schools that I've been in over the past 11 years as a counselor, that's where I would go. Mm -hmm. I would prefer not to teach. I had to teach. That was tough. Yeah. I had to teach in there and they could care less about my careers, careers class. Is that what it was? <laughs> yes. <laughs> huh. In theory, I would have loved it, but they were not. I mean, yeah. no. Every, did, any of them, did any of them think they were going to have a career? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of them did. This school did a really good job. I was, I was the junior counselor. This school did a really good job at gearing them toward college and careers. Um, you know, uh, for, it really did a good job preparing them for real life. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there was some parent involvements, you know, a little bit more maybe than in, in a public school in Camden, but you know, still, they needed help. The, the families needed help. So there was a lot placed on, on the school and the counselor. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. And during that time, also my one son was really struggling in school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was starting to kind of have my own, I guess, I'm going to call it a breakthrough. Yeah. <laughs> 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 where I just needed to like figure out really where I was supposed to be. You know, I can, I think that's probably really one of the main starts of this kind of awakening that I've had. Mm -hmm. um, it really started, it really started there. It was like, I was not okay. You know, I wasn't okay. Even though I loved the school, there was a lot, it was just a lot to manage. The boys were young I yeah. felt like I was missing all these things, you know, um, yeah. even though I had come out of this really long period of missing a lot of things, you know, getting my master's degree, right. uh, maybe it just took a minute to catch up to me. I don't know. Yeah. But um, I'm still in touch with some of those kids today, actually. Really? Yes. That's so fun. Yeah. Hmm. And so, um, but, you know, we kind of, you know, we kind of got the whole situation settled with my son yeah. and I thought, you know, I'm going to go back to counseling, but they had riffed me. It's called reduction in force um, from the school in Camden. So I had to find another position and I found a part-time school counseling position. I was so excited yeah. and I worked in, <laughs> in a middle school though. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I never want to work in middle school. I'll take elementary or high school, but I'm never going to wind yeah. up in middle school. Like, it's so, it's difficult. Yeah. And it was, it was, yeah. it was, it was really difficult in the middle school, but I've been working now K to eight. So kindergarten through eighth grade as a school counselor, pretty much in, I was in public, but most recently I've been in private school, Catholic school. Yeah. All the way up until yesterday <laughs> yeah <Yep. laughs> well technically june 30th but you have to give 60 days yeah so i just you know i think there's more for me so you're at your next pivotal shift in I what am. you want to do in your life and what you want to yep. bring in and offer to people and express yourself. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I do think that I could have come to this point sooner. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You know, um, it's, there's a lot of, there's been a lot of drive for me to be an achiever. I feel mm -hmm. like in my life, I've always been an achiever. Mm -hmm. So it feels uh, interesting to 
really not have much on the horizon, not to know what's next, Mm. but I'm trying to relax into that. (laughs) Yeah. And redefine what achieving means. Like what is, what does achieving mean to you now versus, you know, 10 years ago? Yeah. Achieving now is, is like peace and happiness and, you know, or it's actually, it's more being present. It's just being present in, in everything, you know, because at this point I'm, I feel like everything really is happening for my highest good, no matter what that is. Yeah. And I've had some rough things that have happened for my highest good for sure. Yeah. Uh, You know, so I think there's a lot of, I, I have more faith in a way than I ever have that things are going to, you know, be happening for my highest good and that I'm going to be able to handle it, whatever it is. And what about if this is like the way that you're living, being present in every moment? What if this is, um, I don't want to say it, but (laughs) what if this is actually the pinnacle of your, your life? is learning this lesson and and you never have to do anything like to earn money or to work or whatever ever again. Oh my gosh. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? Do you feel (laughs) this this like whoosh of like, just I'm at peace with that. I feel like maybe that is it. Could it it could be it. Yeah. That's okay. Right. Yeah. I remember having that epiphany, actually, myself. Um, I can't even remember when it was, but it was just a sudden recognition of the fact that um, from this moment forward in my life, I can do only the things that cause me joy or that I feel that are fun. Nothing ever again has to be work. Yes. That is the ultimate goal, isn't it? Right. So maybe your, maybe your whole life can be filled with taking Bo for a walk and <laughs> meditating and <laughs> going oh my to visit Alicia at the store. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I w- you know what? It's it. Yesterday when we were, when I was talking to Jeff about the decision, like, was I going to really go back to work or not? Yeah. Um, when I finally said, why am I doing all of this? I'm making myself crazy thinking I have to go or that I need to have X amount of money or I need to have this, you know, like once I let kind of all those worldly things fall away, there was just nothing left but to be and do what I want to do. And he said to me, and I said, but there's nothing next. Like there's nothing, like I'm looking at nothing. Yeah. He said, and that, and that's okay. He said, maybe that's what's supposed to be. Oh, go Jeff. Jeff said that. I know. <laughs> when I'm going to put that as on in here, my notes here, when nothing is next. Yeah. Like in some ways that can create anxiety, but also relaxation. Yes. Especially if you're living your life, like I have to do this next and this and this, and like your whole life is planned in this, unending to-do list yeah yes how about what great practice i'm getting right now in this quarantine totally there is literally nothing to do (laughs) i mean i have cleaned every closet twice (laughs) you know after everything is done it's done like but you know do you really ever get to being done i mean things just kind of <laughs> cycle other opportunities for fun and pleasure yes exactly like yeah. starting our own school or yeah. you know like so shout out to lauren in lauren's interview yes. lauren Man- mansky we talked about how fun it would be to teach kids how to to work with their energy how to Uh feel their feelings in a really embodied way. And my suggestion to her was, it's got to start with the teachers. So who's going to teach the teachers? And how easy would that be? I was jumping up and down. I was like, me, 
<laughs> Where are you, Lauren? Where are you? <laughs> you know, how do I get to this school that you want to start or that maybe, you know, maybe I start a branch. Like, I don't know, you know. Or how about but, you just uh, make your own thing because you are so creative and clearly you have all of the organizational skills and the momentum and the, and the, the network and I mean, you have everything kind of like in place if you wanted to, to do this for fun. Yes. Right. Exactly. And I think, you know, I, when we were, when I was listening though, I was, I, I know you and I had talked about this, but I said, oh, I don't know. Can I call it energy? Can we call it, you know, it prayer? Can we, can we, can we call a Hindu goddess into class today? Like, yeah. is that going to work <laughs> or, or, or are we going to have to smooth that out for people? You know, um, I mean, I think there's still a way to, to teach kids, you know, about, again, their energy, their emotions, their feelings, um, that's very lacking today. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we don't allow kids to feel their feelings. We, we do a lot of shutting that down. You know, if you're crying and the counselor's not in, you get sent to the, the bathroom <laughs> to wash your face off and come back. You know, mm -hmm. if, yeah, if you're angry, you know, you have to go, you know, to the corner or the principal or, right. <laughs> or the counselor, you know, it's, it's very much like, sh it's still a form, I think, of like shutting down emotion, right? Like you can't feel sadness or anger or, you know, if you're too happy or too giddy, um, calm down, calm you're down. Also punished. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no you emotion can only, is there. You can only be numb. Exactly. You can only be numb and you can only focus on the work, the academic work. Yeah. Yeah. And, and no wonder kids don't, it's like when they're little, when they're in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, mostly they think school's fun because yeah. coloring and cutting and recess and gym are still part of the experience. Yeah. And, and there's opportunity for play. But when kids are fourth, fifth, sixth and on, there's nothing there. I mean, there's a gym class if you're lucky for 25 minutes or right. like a study hall where you might get to talk to a friend or lunch, which is literally 20, I don't even know, 23 minutes or some ridiculous yeah. amount of time where nobody can actually eat their food. Like you're just yeah. shoveling your food. Um, so it's no wonder people, they dread going to school. I would, if I, my life ran the way it did when I was in school, I would dread it too. Yeah. I would hate yeah. going to school. And I did. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. And these kids, when they get sent to me, also, guess what? They're amazing. The kid who was just throwing a paperweight across the room is like the happiest kid in the world sitting in my office. I mean, yeah. it's very rare it, it, in my entire career. I'm going to say maybe there's one student who has been very consistent in the yeah. classroom and in my office, but that's yeah. it everyone else is so happy to be there. And, and I feel like it's because there's one-on-one -on -one attention happening. Mm -hmm. It's fun in my office where we're playing games, reading, practice things, you know, again, I am sometimes trying to trick them, <laughs> you know, with these little games about how to like, you know, get out your sillies and then, and then sit down, you know, and then we, you know, we're like practicing or we do like freeze tag or freeze games. And, you know, like there's a time to be okay. Yay. And then there's a time to be like frozen listening, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so, you know, they, it's, I wish that there more of that could just be in the, in the classroom, you know, like teachers, I think feel a lot of need to, to be control to control. And, and yeah. so do parents. Yeah. Right. We want to control the, the child to our child to be respectful and to be um, a good student and to be a good athlete and to be, you know, to be all these things because they're we see them as a reflection of us. Yeah. A prototype, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Want them to be a prototype. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or some kind of like athletic robot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Yeah, that's a real study to go to some of these games and sit yeah. with parents. You know? I used to be one of those parents. I mean, 
In some ways, Jeff will still say I'm, I'm sort of like, I can. <laughs> now I go, wait. Up. <laughs> yeah, I get kind of pulled in and then I go, wait, this is my son's not a future NBA player. It's okay. <laughs> 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 I wish, um, I wish for my kids who are, Mia is almost 12, so she's in sixth grade and going through like the toughest year yet, by the way, oh, just the worst freaking year. Although so she would tell you she's fine. Um, and Jakey, who's in second grade and pretty much still in that oblivious, everything is cool phase. Um, yes. It's like how we, like even us people, we don't do, like grownups, we don't do well sitting still for hours a day. No. Nope. It hurts our bodies. We get stiff. It's, you know, we, we can't move well. We can't get up off the ground anymore, like gracefully. <laughs> I look like an 80-year-old trying to get off the ground. I need to work on that. <laughs> um, you know, and and we just are running from thing to thing. And and what if in schools, like at the end of every period, there was 10 minutes for kids to just go like jump around or stretch or do a yoga pose or close their eyes for a minute? Like, that's what I would have done. I would have like had a, like a lavender eye pillow and just like gone to lay in the back room on, on a yoga mat flat. Yes. My most restful position is flat on my back. And so if I had multiple yeah. opportunities to do that during the day, yeah. it would have been so much easier for me. To learn. There are some there are some amazing teachers out there that do have like a whole yoga section of their classroom. Really? And yep. And they they come in. They they use it for transitions. Like they'll come in from from lunch, or they'll come in from recess or gym. Then they go to the yoga mat, and then they're like kind of preparing themselves to do math. And then sometimes mm -hmm. in between math and reading, they go back to that yoga section. But we mm -hmm. like. We, I say we, but there's so much crammed in, you know, you have to meet certain academic goals. It just makes it so difficult. But if kids aren't in the right headspace, and I think a lot of people and teachers are definitely seeing this for sure, mm -hmm. but you know, you have to get your, your children prepared, your students ready to learn and whatever that looks like. And it may look like different things for different kids. Um, I went in and taught a series, a second, was it second? Yeah, there were second graders and I don't even do yoga. <laughs> Yet I say yet, yeah. um, but I would was pouring through this yoga for kids book, and I was like, these kids need yoga, and they loved it, and they ate it up every week. Yeah, and you know, and I even said to the teacher, like, and she was at kind of at her wits' end, and I said, you know, well, it is, it's not so bad, even if everyone just needs to get up and do a yoga, just do it. Okay. You know, it's like a minute or two yeah. to, and it, or it, maybe it's one student. Does that student want to go back, you know, to the Get yoga mat or something? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We did, we were doing tree pose. We did mountain. We did, um, geez, I can't even remember them all, but we were like everything. We yeah. were, we went through the whole, the whole, um, litany of them. And, and, um, I think she, she found that was really helpful. And the kids, again, they loved having that class. They loved when I came in. And I really think that that's, I mean, there's no like one size fits all though, right? Yeah. Yoga may be the thing for one. I was in another class that I loved and she had them all dancing in between like math and reading. And she'd put on music and she'd have them dance, yeah. you know, and she say, well, sometimes they get out of hand, so I can't let them dance. I'm like, no, that's when they need to dance more. Totally. Yes. <laughs> they need their energy yeah. to move. Yeah. It, it's because, so here's why the teachers have to go first. When the teachers understand in their bodies, the impact of moving energy and experiencing their energy and like letting, literally letting all the stress leave their body and how clear they are mentally, then yeah. They will, they, they will advocate for this in schools. Yeah. I, yep. I think teachers have a powerful voice, although, you know, some of them don't believe they do. I think it's because they don't believe they have a powerful voice that they may not. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you know yeah. what? I also would like parents to be on board with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think. It's um, like a revolution, Meg. You can start a revolution. Yes. Yes, because I, I, lots of schools really do respond to parents. Yeah. They really, really do. Like 
we're more as a staff and teachers afraid, I think, of parents. Like, you know, <laughs> we want them to see that we're trying hard and that we're doing our best. Most of us, I feel, I really do feel like we, we want parents to see like, hey, we're doing our best. We want the best for your child. We want to teach your child. Like, and in, in a lot of cases, we need them to learn to go yeah. forward, you know, and we feel panic when they're not and we don't know what to do, you know. Um, and that's when we have teams come in, right? We have child study teams and everything. And we get so worried, but like, and we get scared of these parents, but we really want to work. Really, we want to work with them and we want them to be advocating with us. Like if we could all come together, like as, as um, teachers and parents to kind of move this agenda of, you know, not so much <laughs> academics. I mean, yeah, it's back it to the even, body. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't even have to be that much. So we're not talking about like an hour, right. you know, we're talking about minutes in between transitions and in between classes and, you know. Yeah, that's funny. And it reminds me of, um, <laughs> it reminds me of this other interview I did with my friend, Jesse, and he talks about with, he's a trainer and he helps people develop a movement lifestyle where every time you get up to do something, go to the bathroom, you do a movement. Like, like he has like a plank of wood across the middle of his floor and he just balances on the wood as he walks to the bathroom. That's so fun. That's like a joke in our house. Is it? I'm like, lunge, get, lunge to the bathroom, boys. Do a couple lunges. <laughs> right, which but is like, cool, but, but make it skipping or, or, or whatever joyful movement. Like maybe you spin or maybe you like, I don't know, do the hokey pokey or something. Like for yeah. littler kids. I mean, it's fine for older kids to do lunges, but, or whatever movement yeah. they want. Like, do you ever see yeah, that right? teacher who, um, that cute video where there's this teacher who greets their child, like greets the children every day and they can do like a fist bump, a yes. hug, a high five yes. or nothing yes. at all. I can't remember the choices. Yep. Like maybe, maybe when kids move, every time they move, they, they get to choose from three choices of three movements, like whatever it is, um, to get them going. But before yeah, I had absolutely. this thought, I was thinking of like, how would you... Well, obviously, you know, it has to start with the parents. Yeah. So how do you get parents to understand the importance of moving your body, moving your body every day, like regularly? A lot of parents do not understand this themselves. Yeah. So I was thinking like you could have an assembly um, yes. where you have some lecturing and then you have, I don't mean lecturing like you're bad. I mean, discussion. And then- yeah. <laughs> You stand up and you do like some kind of embodied movement exercise, a yoga pose, a dance or whatever. And so people could see how it feels to have these frequent breaks. Yes. And that helps parents to understand why. Yeah. We had um, done, a, a, actually we did it as like a girl's night, but we were going to do like a boy's night also where we had the parents come in or, you know, or, or not just a parent, but it could be like a mentor, you know, if you wanted to come in with your older sibling or whatever. And that's what we did. We had all these different like stations of, um, you know, just kind of, we had like a nutrition station and we had like a dance, we had yoga, we had, we had nail painting, we had, you know, just all these different things set up, but it, that's how we, when we presented it, we were like, Hey, you know, this is about, this is like a set, it was like a self care talk. Like, you know, you, yeah. you, have to take care of the whole person. Like, you know, in school we're, you know, talking to your brain and you're growing your brain, but like there are other things you, we want you to grow also, you know, we right. want you to grow with knowledge of how it's healthy, healthy ways of eating and healthy ways of moving your body. And, um, and love of you your know. body. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Not just and so, you have to put on these awful gym outfits and like play volleyball. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. But I think parents get tired too. It's like another assembly, another assembly. Like, you know, you have back to school night and you have all these meetings and you have yeah. like, there's like a social media night now. It's like, it's so overwhelming, you know, for a lot of parents to. Yes. However you signed up for kids. Like you decided yeah. you wanted to have kids and therefore 
Yeah. Plus it's, it's healing. It's not you just sitting in an auditorium um, listening to like the do's and don'ts and how to, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Oh gosh. That's so fun to think about. Just it needs imagining. to be something fun. Yeah. Yeah, it needs to be like yes. you and your, it's like a bonding for you and your child, you know. We should get Alicia on board. Yeah, I was just thinking, she just came to me too. Yep. <laughs> Alicia is a friend of Megan's who, she's just one of those networkers. <laughs> yes. She can get people signed up to anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> How fun. Yeah. How exciting. Yeah, maybe there's a program of going into schools and doing that, running it for them. That just got yeah. like big, shiny light bulbs yes. went off in my head. Yeah. Rather than yeah. working in a school, like you're kind of a, not an outsider, but like an expert um, who gets to just come in and, and, and like create change. Yeah. Begin yep. change for a school. And you, yeah. and you could have like a website where there's consulting. If people wanted to work closer with you, you could have yeah, an exactly. online school program for teachers to take for CEU or I don't know. What is it for teachers? What do they need credits? Some kind yeah, of it's just professional development, <clears throat> professional yeah. development, yeah. online professional development where that you could teach people different exercises on how to move their body, how to, how yes. to run fun classrooms, how to, how to clear the energy of the classroom, how to hold space for kids. How, I mean, these are all things that as humans, we need to know, Never mind as teachers. Yeah. Yeah. But what a cool opportunity to bring what all the things that you have, you know, now. Yeah. An impact. Yeah. And I think there's can be pieces too, right? There can be an assembly for the students. There can be a parent night for parents and students, you know? Yeah. And then there could be right ongoing consulting. Exactly. As you said, there's, there are a lot of things out there and schools have money to bring some of these programs in. And I've seen a lot of them and I feel like they kind of fall flat. They're boring. There was one, yeah. <laughs> yes. They can be there boring. Was, yeah, there was one that I was really interested in a while back. It originated in Colorado. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it was, uh, it's called Rachel's Challenge. But Rachel was one of the students killed in Columbine. Mm -hmm. and, and her family put together a foundation, and now they go in, into schools. They do a parent night. They do a student, you know, and it's a really anti-bullying style program but they have the whole thing and then they have a club you can run a club and they mm -hmm. consult with you and they have all the lesson plans and I thought this is how you do it you know what I mean that the way that they had imagined it you know but again a lot of these are very traditional I really feel like this whole you know moving your body and um you know professional development for teachers as a piece of it too I think I think it'd be great to be like a whole program like that you know, just yeah. especially in some tough districts where they don't have a lot of parental involvement, you know, and the teachers get burnt out pretty quick. And they're burnt out because they don't know how to handle their energy. Yep. Yes. They don't know how they're overwhelmed by the kids' energy. They're overwhelmed by yes. the stories that they hear all day long. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So if they're given tools... They can they can they can handle it much better. It's like it's kind yeah. of like therapists. I mean, people who do body work they we need to have self care tools, and if we don't have them, we burn out just like teachers do. We can't do yeah. it anymore. We get injured. We get autoimmune diseases. We get all kinds of stuff. Um, yes, just like in any other field where, when things get we get overwhelmed. Yeah. So really like across the board, maybe it starts in school, but maybe you expand out into, into companies and yeah. like, who knows, just like a, like a, like, um, education for stressed out people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you know, I feel like I do like a lot of people talk about self care. Yeah. Um, and I real I realize they associate self care with, I'm going to get my nails done or I'm going to get, you know, a massage. They don't associate it all with your energy and, and keeping yourself kind of, you know, grounded and present. They don't, 
they're missing the point. They're using all these external things, right, yeah. to try to take care of themselves. And, and that's good, okay, too. I'm not saying it's not right. okay, but I just think, you know, they, they miss the point of the and real it's, true It's limiting, again. too. Like, if you don't have money for a biweekly manicure or to go get your eyebrows done every for me, it's like every six weeks because I forget. <laughs> um, yeah, my lady, every time she's like, well, <laughs> this will be a while. <laughs> I'm lucky I'm blonde. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a story around I can't afford self-care, which yeah. because of this, because of our stories around self-care is – going to a float tank once a month and getting your eyebrows done and getting a pedicure and taking a vacation every three months. And no, that, yes. I mean, yes, that is a loving, kind and generous thing that you can do for yourself and for your body. However, self-care is within everyone's grasp. It, as long as yeah, you yeah. understand, you know, what the basics of self-care are, is, are, <laughs> which, yeah. Yeah. So People need to know that. Yeah. That's exciting. It's a fun idea. It is. Yeah. I, I think it's also like just checking in with yourself, right? And it doesn't have to be a long meditation, but maybe it's just a moment to be like, what do I need right now? A manicure or, <laughs> you know, or. <laughs> a nap. <laughs> yeah, a nap. <laughs> 10 minutes in the sun, sitting yeah. outside, you know? like. Yeah. Um, what, one of my friends, Jordan, he says, if nothing else, just take one conscious breath. Oh yeah. I love that. And by conscious, it's like you're paying attention to the breath. That's what he means. Yeah. One mindful breath, one like breath where you actually are noticing that you're inhaling and noticing that you're exhaling rather than just rushing through it, moving on with your day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Hmm. Well, I guess you, maybe you have a future after all. <laughs> I, think I, I think we've just manifested my next step in this <laughs> very Or at least, you know, having fun conversations about it. Like, what would it look like? Is this even something that brings me joy? Um, yeah. Maybe there's some part of that that is more joyful than others. Like, maybe it's more joyful for you to work with teachers, or maybe it's more joyful for you to work with women, moms. Yeah. You know, who knows? Yeah. yeah or, or not at all. Or this was yeah. a fun conversation. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel resistance to it right now. I mean, it yeah. feels good to, you know, use what I know and what I've personally experienced to, you know, be able to bring that to someone who would utilize it. And I think also detaching myself from the expectation that the person follows through with it. You know, if they don't, they don't, you know, and it's okay. Yeah. You know what? One of the things that I've learned I think you and I have talked about it. So that even in, even when we feel like we've shared something really important and impactful with someone mm -hmm. and that they did nothing with it, they do later in life. It will come back to them. If something's mm -hmm. offered that's, that's loving and, and true, it, it, does, um, it does get remembered. And I've had that experience for myself where I had, did I tell you about this? I was driving through the mountains one time. Um, and I was driving somewhat near this, I went to this mountain healer once, like four or five years ago. Did I tell you this story? I think you did, but keep going. Facebook. Okay. Well, a long time ago, back in the early days of my awakening, um, I went to go see this guy in the mountains who um, did a lot of very, um, for me at the time, was very strange healing. Um, clapping over me and crystal stuff and um, I laid on his massage table and there were all these like gadgets and things hanging down over me and it was just a very extraordinary experience um, and I left there feeling kind of pissed off <laughs> like what did I go all the way into the mountains to see this guy it was like two out two and a half hour drive um, over like Colorado roads where you're like literally like nearly going down a cliff which is my least favorite thing um, for nothing essentially. Uh -huh. And then maybe four or five months ago, I was driving through the mountains, not just not that close to where he lives, but something about that energy there reminded me of that time. And I used my, my, my sight and I could see 
the energy of what this man had given to me mm-hmm. kind of stuck in my energy field. Like I yeah. had not wanted to take that energy in. I mm-hmm. had resistance to it. So I, I just kind of left it there hanging. And in that awareness of, oh, I didn't actually receive this gift, this beautiful gift this man was giving me. I couldn't receive it at that time because it was a weird gift to me. As soon as I became aware of that, I could then receive that energy. And it was really powerful knowing of, for me, you know, as a person who does healing work, sometimes you worry that you've invested your energy in someone or you really um, love someone and you want them to feel better and they don't, and it can Uh be disappointing. But if I can have that experience of having that energy stuck in my aura and then receive it later, five years later, everyone can. Yeah. Yeah. That was a post. It was a you post. Had, <laughs> yeah. It was a post, but it's lovely to think that that's possible. It makes me want to go back and right now for me and just kind of see, see if I can get to some place where there are things for me that I'm ready to grab, you know? Yeah. Like Almost think about like float back through time and just be like, wait, I really want, yeah, I'm ready for that you now. You could, or you could yeah. look in your aura and mm-hmm. think of, and say, I want to find all the kind words that I couldn't receive. Oh, yes. That's and all, all of the little <laughs> gestures that people, I mean, I had this experience yesterday. Noah texted me, you are my hero, which he does kind of as a joke to me now. Because he knows I, I, it's like, it's like swallowing a, like a python for me. It's, it's like <laughs> such an intense compliment for me to take. Um, mm-hmm. So I, he, he messages me this every now and then so I can practice. <laughs> and yesterday I was like. <laughs> oh, sure I can swallow this. But, but I, I could take it in after a moment. I just said no this is his, he's trying to give you love right now and don't reject it just because it's in a, you are my hero package. (laughs) Take it in. And I I think we do. I think we reject people's simple words. You know, sometimes it's very innocuous what they say and sometimes it's really big. Um, So we have this opportunity, you know, even when those moments are long past to, to look, to kind of scan through our aura and even our body and see if there's um, energy that's, that's loving that we can take into our heart and integrate. Yeah. And really receive. <clears throat> yeah. That's, it's hard for a lot of people, right? It's definitely hard for me mm-hmm. to accept compliments just period in general, you know, and sometimes I just stop and I have to say, I will allow it. <laughs> <laughs> I literally do that because I don't know what else to do. I'm so uncomfortable about it. I'm just like, I'll allow it. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, you're giving it the side eye. Like, "Mm -hmm." I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) And we, and we get to do that also with um, things that people say to us that don't feel good. We can say, I do not allow this. Yes. Into my being. This is not energy that I will, I want to receive. Man. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> I'm scanning my aura now. <laughs> Where's all the love I didn't want? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm writing that down. Accepting love and kind words. So you don't know what you're doing now, but if anyone has any questions or they're excited about your these ideas or they want to chat with you. Is there a way that people can reach out to you? Sure. What, I mean, I have a lot of ways, right? I have, I'm on Facebook and Instagram and email. Do you want to, what would be your preference? I mean, all of those or one particular one? Probably email. Okay. I'll probably get that easier. Which is the one that you want people to use? You, you could use Newman Meg okay. at me.com. 
Okay, great. So cool. I hope people reach out. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with questions about anything, really. <laughs> yeah. Yes, counseling, college. You see my college book, you noticed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even imagine you being a counselor after this. I don't know why. It's like, it's just one way to use, use your, your wisdom. And I, I can just see you doing it in much more fun and, and um, a way that enables you to be more free with your time and, and just do really like lots of time for meditation and yeah. Uh, girl time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll, I'm going to stop recording now. Okay. Much love to you. Thank you. <laughs>